Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Ordinary Council meeting for Monday, 23rd of January 2023. Um, firstly, I'd like to welcome uh, Council's new CEO, uh, Ms Jackie Weatherall, um, who has been with Council now since December 19th. So welcome, Ms Weatherall. Uh, item 1.1, 1. 1, attendance. Are there any apologies, Ms Weatherall? Just look. Any apologies? Sorry. Sorry. No, that's... Green. Sorry, Meg, trying to get the new sound system right. We have an apology this evening from Councillor Lloyd Traw. Thank you. Item 1.2, acknowledgement of traditional owners of the land. Council acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of this land, the Bunurong people, and pays our respects to their elders past, present and emerging while also recognising their deep and continuing connections to climate, culture and country. We also pay our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their elders and acknowledge their journey. And I'd like to acknowledge any that may be here in the um, gallery this evening. Item 1.3, offering of prayer, reflection or affirmation. As part of Council's commitment to recognising the cultural and spiritual diversity of our community, the prayer this evening will be offered by Reverend Father Jean Mawal from the St Paul Antiochian Orthodox Church, a member of the Greater Dandenong Interfaith Network. Can I please ask everyone to stand? So, tonight's prayer is a blessing for the new year and especially for our councillors. Master Lord our God, the fountain of life and immortality, the creator of all things both visible and invisible, who has appointed seasons and years by your power and directs all things by your most wise and all gracious providence, we thank you for your compassions which you have poured out upon us during the passing time of our life. And we entreat you, O holy, compassionate Lord, bless the crown of the coming year with your goodness, preserve our civil authorities, Multiply the days of their life in unalterable health and grant them progress in every virtue. Grant your good things from above to your people, health and salvation and good hastening in all things. Deliver your people, this city and every city and land, from every evil circumstance, granting them peace and tranquility. And count us worthy that we may all always offer thanksgiving to you, our God and benefactor to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Item 1.4, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Do I have a mover, please? Move that. Moved by Deputy Mayor, Council Formoso. Seconded, seconded by Councillor Lim. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 1.5, disclosures of interest. Are there any disclosures of interest, Ms. Winner? No, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Item 2, officers' reports, part 1. Item 2.1, documents for tabling. Item 2.1.1, documents for tabling. Do I have a mover Please moved move by Councillor Garrard, seconded by Councillor Tan? Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 2.1.2, petitions and joint letters. Moved by move. Councillor Dark, thank you. Seconded, Seconded by Councillor Tan. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, my question to the relevant officer uh, in the petition is a petition to which I have received regarding the Keysborough Tennis Club uh, and the upgrades of the facilities. Um, the club is experiencing a significant amount of growth with a lot of young families in the Keysborough area uh, and they are under a lot of pressure. So they are seeking uh, the installation of an additional court in the rear corner, which is where the dog park area is. Um, the petition has actually been signed by um, almost 200 people and it's still growing at the moment. A lot of them are residents of the Noble Park in Keysborough, Keysborough South Wards. Um, if we could please get an update of where exactly that is at, uh, because I am aware that the Keysborough Tennis Club received a very generic reply, but they haven't heard anything further. 
Thank you, Councillor Dark. Mr Forster. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, Councillor Dark, I understand that uh, officers have already been in touch with the relevant officers of the Keysbury Tennis Club. They have written to respond and acknowledge the receipt of the petition already. And in that response, they committed uh, one of our sport and recreation staff committed to getting in touch with them. We did them advise them that their request in the position in the petition uh, for consideration in the 23-24 CIP program had passed. Uh, we committed to working with them on a future application to council CIP program. Thank you, Mr. Forster. Are there any other questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 2.2, statutory planning applications. 2.2.1, town, plan, town planning application number 15, Pamela Street, Noble Park. Planning application number PLN 22 slash 0227. Moved by. Happy to move that, Mayor. Moved by Deputy Mayor Councillor Second Formoso. Thanks. Seconded by Councillor Tan. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 2.2.2, town planning application number 4, Bakers Road, Dandenong North. Planning application number PLN 22 slash 0225. Moved by... Happy to move that. Moved by Deputy Mayor, Councillor Formoso. Happy to second. Seconded by Councillor Milkovic. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 2.2.3, planning decisions issued by planning minister's delegate, November and December 2022. Moved I'm happy by, to move that. Moved by Councillor Mametti, seconded by Councillor Long. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 2.2.4. Planning delegated decisions issued November and December 2022. Moved, Moved by Councillor Long, seconded by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item three, question time public. Ms Weatherall, do we have any public questions, please? Yes, Madam Mayor, we've got um, quite a few. Would you like me to get the um, residents to come first or to read the ones that I've um, read them in the order that you've got and maybe ask okay. the resident if they're here to ask the question. All right, so the first question we have is um, noise local laws. Under current council laws, the allowable days and times for re residential noise include Sunday. This includes use of construction tools and equipment. As a local resident with a building development currently happening on the other side of the road to our property, our household and other households on our street are being exposed to loud noise on a Sunday from works going on there. Can the council please consider the EPA guidelines provided by the Victorian government, which recommend that normal working hours for civil construction be limited to weekdays and Saturday only? You'll find that a large number of councils in the Melbourne metro region follow these recommendations and prohibit civil construction on Sundays. Um, may I ask? Why not Greater Dandenong? And that was provided by Miss Hingley from Noble Park. The Director of City Planning, Design and Amenity will respond. Okay. Thank you, Ms Weatherall. Mr Bosman. Madam Mayor, thank you to yourself, to Ms uh, Gabrielle Hingley. Um, consideration of this clause and, a, and the possible alignment with the current EPA guidelines will occur when Council's Local Law Number 2 is reviewed in the second half of 2023. The said it does not exclude the use of the EPA guidelines if the said construction noise is considered unreasonable as outlined in the EPA guidelines. Please note that EPA have a compliance function in respect of noise complaints relating to a commercial or industrial business and can be referred to EPA pollution hotline. Um, and the number, and it will be in the minutes, is 1300-372-842. Um, should Ms Hingley um, or any community member experience construction noise which disrupts sleep, daily living, learning, communication or relaxation, please report it to Council's customer service team and the appropriate officers will take action. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr Bosman. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This one's from Mr Cumming of Springvale and it concerns the Spring Valley Reserve in Springvale South. 
He states it's a mess after the remediation works, especially towards the south end of the park. The existing paths and bridge across a small watercourse are gone, and much of the space is now a swampy area with little apparent planning for drainage or usability. What works are planned to improve this area and when will they be completed? Can I ask the Acting Director, Business Engineering and Major Projects to respond? Thank you, Mr Chinkokana. Thank you, Mayor. The most recent works that have been um, undertaken at the site have been a, a new earthworks layer across the whole of the site. And the key challenges here to, is to, to re-establish the grass cover before we can actually do any other works. The site will look overgrown um, and we're mowing it in a managed manner but it's important to have that grass secured to stop any erosion um, through rainwater um, that, 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 that occurs during the storms. Um, it's hoped that by, um, by the end of um, August 20, 2023, that grass will be established to the point where we can then move heavy equipment onto it to recreate the paths and the associated infrastructure. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The next question is also from Mr Cumming of Springvale. In regards to signage, there's a lot of election signage still visible in various parts of CGD, particularly in Springvale and Springvale South. Some of this is located on power poles and road signage and other areas, not directly in council areas. Does council have a plan to remove any signage? Can I ask the director, city planning, design and amenity to respond? Thank you. Mr Bosman. Madam Mayor. Thank you again through yourself. Um, to Mr Cumming, election signage is required to be removed within 14 days after the election date. Council officers are aware of signage still being displayed and are removing these as um, they are discovered. We request that if any community member becomes aware of election signage being displayed, that they use the SnapSend Solve phone app or contact our customer service team and the appropriate officers will then have the signage removed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr Bosman. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have a third question for Mr Cumming of Springvale concerning municipal waste. Council's municipal waste strategy expired in 2020. When will it be updated and what can we expect in the new strategy? Given the changed environment around recycling of soft plastics in particular, there's an urgent need to move quickly towards a municipal collection of some kind. Glass recycling bins are another area of interest. Are there plans to introduce these? Can I ask the Acting Director, Business Engineering and Major Projects to respond? Thank you. Mr Trinkwagana. Thank you, Mayor. The, the 2015 to 2020 Greater Dandenong Waste and Litter Strategy is still in effect, so it hasn't expired. We're currently working on an updated draft strategy that will be covered the next five years, but as I said, that's still in draft. This, this updated draft um, has been developed, um, but we're working through a number of minor changes and updates. Um, before we present that to Council. A number of other Councils have also gone through or are going through this process at the moment, and there are key items which will need to be included or addressed, such as the, implement, the implementation of the Recycling Victoria Container Deposit Scheme. Um, we've also got updates on food organics and garden organics, advanced waste treatment uh, options and landfill diversion. And whilst the recycling of soft plastics, plastics is a concern from a local government perspective, there is a there's a limitation on what council can do for this except to engage with the state government to find a, uh, a solution to this ongoing problem. Thank you, Mr. Trinkogana. Ms. Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. Next question is for Mr. Lamaro of Dandenong about the need for public toilets. Council relocated the bus interchange from Thomas Street Dandenong to Langhorne Street many years ago. The Thomas Street bus interchange had access to public toilets at the council's multi-level car parking facilities in Langhorne Street. Oh, sorry, facilities. Langhorne Street has no public facilities, so people are seen urinating in local walkways in front of stores. As these were moved almost 10 years ago, I believe it's time Council provided facilities for this bus interchange. Does Council have plans to install or build public facilities to, to support the people at this bus interchange? If so, when is the ETA of these facilities? Can I ask the Acting Director, Business and Engineering and Major Projects to respond? Thank you. Mr Trinkwakana. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, the Greater Dandenong Public Toilet Strategy 2021 to 2031 <coughs> identifies that there are a number of public toilets within short walking distance of this site. Um, so, as a result, there are no plans to install additional toilets, but I will ask officers to do a, a review of the signage to see whether uh, better direction signage will help some of these problems. Thank you, Mr Trinkwakana. Ms Weatherall. 
Thank you, Mayor. Another question from Mr Lamaro of Dandenong concerning colourful flowers. Lonsdale Street Dandenong landscaping is very green with little to no flowers or colour. Colour is commonly used to entice people and currently Lonsdale Street has no flowers or colour to encourage people to shop there. Councils put temporary flower boxes along Lonsdale Street, but these are again non-flowering plants. Could council start putting flowering plants in these flower boxes to install colour into the area? I look at the flower boxes on Palm Plaza Walk, which has many bright flowers of red, yellow and white, but the flower boxes on Lonsdale Street have no colour. Could council start putting colourful flowering plants in the flower boxes along Lonsdale Street to create a more inviting and colourful area to encourage more people and shoppers to visit? Can I ask the Acting Director, Business Engineering and Major Projects to respond? Thank you. Mr Chinkwagana. Thank you, Mayor. The plant displays in Lonsdale Street feature Australian native plants and each display lasts for about six months. At this time, the plants have matured and they can no longer be contained within the pots that they've been placed in. So we remove them and plant them into local parks uh, and reserves and this improves the plant diversity throughout the municipality. It also ensures that there's an investment in the plant display, that it's maximised um, and that they have ongoing life after this street display. The plant selection is informed by their ultimate use in, in parks and reserves and the design of the stainless steel crate. Crates dictate a larger pot size uh, and that requires less watering um, across the distance of Lonsdale Street. The approach in Palm, Palm Plaza uh, differs as the plant volumes are significantly less. These living colour displays feature annuals which last a single growing cycle of approximately 12 weeks and then die off and need to be fully replaced. Uh, there are three seasonal displays per year in Palm Plaza and the design of the metal crates there dictate a smaller pot size which is ideal for the, for the annuals that are used. I should also note that there is a wildflower meadow planted in Pulteney Street where it intersects with Lonsdale Street. This location is seeded with wildflowers which are maintained throughout the year and the location features bird and bee attracting wildflowers of various heights and colours. Thank you Mr Chinkagana. Ms Weatherall. Thank you. And a final question from Mr Lamaro of Dandenong about the clock not functioning. Since moving back to Dandenong, I've noticed a new expensive clock at the Greater Dandenong Council building has not worked for months. Since Council spent thousands on this clock, can you please explain why the clock's not working and when it will be back on? Can I ask the Acting Director of Business Engineering and Major Projects to answer? Thank you, Mr Chinkugana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we'll need a, a much uh, clearer location of where the clock that's being referred to is. Um, we'd, we thought it may have been the, um, the, the clock over the drum theatre, but that's working and has been working well, so we really uh, need to get more feedback of which clock the uh, resident's talking about. Thank you, Mr Chinkagana. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. I've now got a question from Ms Smith of Dandenong about the Dandenong Community Hub design. I asked in a question at the last council meeting regarding Dandenong Community Hub design too. I strongly support option two, but was concerned that the children's services wing and the community services wing were not connected, which is necessary in a true integrated intergenerational community hub. The answer I received was the community lounge and the children's services wing are connected. However, the design clearly shows a lack of a door between the community lounge and the children's services wing. Was the published design missing a door? If not, where is the door? Can I ask the acting director community services to respond, please? Thank you, Mr Forster. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for your question. Uh, the, the three options that were put out for public consultation were concept options. They're not indicative of the final design. Option two did have a, uh, a, a walkway from Stewart Street that opened into the community lounge and a separate entrance into the children's services wing of the, uh, of the community hub. The reason for the separate entrance is that the early years wing must be uh, controlled, uh, controlled environment under legislation and so therefore cannot be open to the public while uh, operations are, um, are in uh, operation. So that is the explanation as to why it doesn't open directly onto the community lounge. Uh, again, these concepts are uh, just concepts, proving that the concept mandated by council under the, nominate, uh, the notice of motion can be achieved on the chosen site and will not, uh, are not indicative of the final design, which will now take place over 2023. Thank you, Mr Forster. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. We now have a question from Ms Puglisi of 
Dandenong about the Dandenong Community Hub consultation. The Council website shows that detailed design and further consultation on the Dandenong Community Hub is due to occur this year in 2023. What month is that expected to occur? Can the Acting Director of Community Services please respond? Through you, Madam Mr. Mayor, Forster. thank you, Ms. Puglisi, for your question. Uh, recent community consultation concluded on Sunday, the 27th of November, 2022. The results have been prepared into a report which is currently scheduled to be presented to councillors in March of 2023. And then, based on councillor instruction, the report will subsequently be scheduled for a formal council meeting endorsement. As per council's website, the next steps for this project currently includes the detailed design throughout 2023, which will include further consultation stages and incorporate the feedback gathered in 2022. Following further action by Council, the project page on the website will be updated and all stakeholders advised of the next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Forster. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. And Ms Mr Giovanni of Dandenong about the Dandenong Community Hub. The community consultation for the concept design of the Dandenong Community Hub finished in November. What are the next steps with the project, including when will the resulting design be put on the Council website? with the explanation of what feedback on elements of the design have been incorporated and which elements have not, including the reasons why. Um, Acting Director Community Services has probably already responded, I think. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Mr Forster. Through you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, um, very similar to my last question, we conducted the uh, um, consultation in the latter half of 2022. That is due to be scheduled to um, uh, be reviewed by Council in March of 2023. Pending that, we would look for an endorsement of a preferred design in order to advance, excuse me, to uh, detailed design throughout 2023. All that information will be posted on the website. And don't forget that a report will, uh, will accompany that endorsement at a council meeting, which would include all of the feedback gathered through the consultation period. Thank you, Mr. Forster. Ms. Weatherall. And um, a question now from Ms. Congress of Dandenong about Dandenong Community Hub citing that the Council website shows that detailed design and further consultation on the Dan Non Community Hub is due to occur this year in 2023. What month is that expected to occur? Mayor, I think the D Director of Community Services has actually already answered that as well in terms of the previous questions. Thank you, Ms Weatherall. There's some more questions. Yep, over to you again. Thank you, Mayor. A lot of questions today. We've been on holidays. Over to um, Ms Congas again from Dandenong. She's got a question on the Little India project. Since the second round of the community consultation on the Capital Alliance, Little India redevelopment last year, there's been no updates on the Capital Alliance website, no updates on the Development Victoria website and no update on the Greater Dandenong Council website, significant as Greater Dandenong is listed as a project partner. What's the status and timeframes of the project and where a Greater Dandenong Council submission to the two consultation periods last year going to be released to Greater Dandenong residents? Can I ask the Acting Director of Business Engineering and Major Projects to respond? Thank you. Mr Trinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're going to refer this question to Development Victoria and we'll, uh, we'll seek from them an update and a response specific, specifically. Thank you. Ms Betherall. The next question is from Mr Kerwin of Noble Park about Fotheringham Reserve Works. When are the works in the Billabong area of Fotheringham Reserve Dandenong due to be completed, particularly the new boardwalks? Can I ask the Acting Director of Business Engineering major projects to respond? Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we've undertaken significant ecological re restoration works at this site, such as redefining the levels, uh, working at the hydrological function, uh, we've done revegetation, erosion control, and these are all now complete and, uh, and uh, being looked after as part of our ongoing maintenance programs. Detailed designs for the board work are progressing and construction will commence shortly after these designs are finalised. It was anticipated that construction will be completed throughout the summer months. However, this may be delayed depending on the availability of materials and, and how complex the design becomes. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. Next question is from Ms Naylor of Noble Park about the police paddocks conservation. What is the latest regarding the development of a plan for the conservation part of police paddocks that was announced by the state government last year? I imagine Greater Dandenong Council will be a key partner, hence why I'm asking this question. I ask the Acting Director of Community Services to respond. 
Mr Forster. Uh, through Thanks. you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Ms Naylor, for your question. Uh, the Bunurong Land Council have advised that they have commenced initial consultations with the state government and Parks Victoria with regards to the plan for this particular area. The City of Greater Dandenong will be a key stakeholder in developing the plan and is currently awaiting further advice from the project working group as to the timing and schedule of first further stakeholder consultation. Thank you, Mr Forster. Ms Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. Another question for Ms. Ta Ms Naylor of Noble Park around tree protection local law. When is the public exhibition of the tree protection local law going to start? Can I ask the Director of City Planning Design Amenity to respond? Thank you, Mr. Posman. Madam Mayor, thank you. Through yourself um, to Ms. Naylor, the public exhibition and consultation of the draft tree protection local law is scheduled to commence on 13 February 2023. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bosman. Ms. Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, from Ms. Naylor of Noble Park. Commencement of public consultation. When will public consultation on the new park at the corner of Railway Parade and Pamela Street, Noble Park, start? Can I ask the Director of City Planning, Design and Amenity to respond? Thank you. Mr. Bosman. Madam Mayor, thank you. And again, to yourself, um, the uh, officers, council officers, have, have submitted a bid for CRP funding to design and construct the future park at 218 Railway Parade, Noble Park, in the 2023-2024 financial year. If the bid is successful, a draft design will be developed and consultation um, undertaken in the 2023-2024 financial year. However, if the bid is not successful, another bid will need to be considered in the 2024-2025 financial year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bosman. Ms. Weatherall. Thank you, Mayor. This question is from um, Ms. Guest of Keysborough on fireworks harming animals. A council tells me that the midnight fireworks were not council-run fireworks. Is this so, that the 9.30 family-friendly ones were the only council paid for fireworks on New Year's Eve? Since Diwali 2022, when local residents were not informed about the fireworks at Springers, fireworks have been going off nightly and continue to do so, including last night. Fireworks are no longer a special event, and on Facebook, 28 animals ended up in the pound on New Year's Eve. An untold number ended up at the 24-hour vet clinics. One dog was hit on Springvale Road and left, and others passed away, all in the name of celebration. As one councillor showed, no empathy, quoting, get on the beers in his Facebook post. How much are all our festivals costing CGD? Can residents have a breakdown of all these costs and where savings could be made? Policing of illicit fireworks is abhorrent, and many residents have to sit with their pets and put on loud background noise to calm them nightly. Why are fireworks the in thing for festivals when they're environmentally taboo? Can I ask Mr Forster and Mr Bossman to respond, please? Thank you. Mr Forster? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms Guest, for your question. I'm advised by my colleague, Mr Bosman, that Local Law No. 2 provides that a permit is required to discharge or cause or allow any fireworks to be discharged. It also requires compliance with Council's policy use of fireworks. Council itself holds two events per year that involve fireworks. These are Springvale Snowfest and New Year's Eve. These events are highly popular, including an expectation from the community to hold fireworks displays. Both events have fireworks at a family-friendly time of 9.30, not at midnight. Uh, information to the community is undertaken well in advance of these events, including print and social media to provide information on taking care of your animals when fireworks are being displayed. In addition, notification letter drops are provided to residents in the surrounding areas prior to an event. Council's overall investment in public festivals and events is considered each year as part of its operational budget. Can community consultation is welcomed during that budget development process. Diwali is a community event not run by Council. For the New Year's Eve 2023 fireworks, a permit was indeed issued after all requirements had been met in accordance with the policy. I can confirm that our local laws officers did, receive, did not receive complaints about illegal fireworks discharged on New Year's Eve, but it does not account for complaints that might have been made to Victoria Police or other agencies. Two complaints were received with regard to fireworks being discharged on 28th of December 2022, but the address from which they were discharged is not known. 
where fireworks have been discharged at or from festivals and ev or events, these can be monitored or policed by local laws officers. And where these have been discharged at those events or gathering without a permit, then the appropriate enforcement action will be taken. However, it is almost certain that the fireworks being mentioned by Ms Guest were illegally discharged backyard fireworks, and these are impossible for Council's local laws officers to police. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Forster. Are there any further questions, Ms Weatherall? Um, we now come to the section where we have um, members of the public who'd like to speak. And the first person we have is Joyce Harris of Noble Park. Thank you, Joyce. Please come up to the microphone. Thank you. Um, welcome to a new year. I have two questions for tonight. Uh, one is about 5G. Um, can you provide a list of where all the 5G sites or um, proposed sites or expanding of sites are in the greater city of Dandenong? And who would be able to provide that and how quick Thank you, Joyce. Uh, Ms Weatherall. Through you, Mayor. That's quite a complicated question, so we'll take that on notice and um, I'll get the information available and we'll look at how we'll distribute that publicly as well. Thank you. Thank you. And my second question is, um, it has been noted that there is a surveillance trailer that has been um, funded by someone, but it's got the logo of City of Dandenong on it and it's got warning, 24 hour surveillance with all sorts of towers and eyes or whatever around it. And it's been located in, you know, housing areas and, you know, we don't understand what that's all about. So number one, the question is, have you got consent <laughs> from anyone um, for you to actually um, surveil us in that way and who has funded this and what is the purpose of having 24 surveillance that can be put on um, a vehicle and taken to any site and what is happening to the data that's being collected from that surveillance. Thank you, Joyce. Um, Mr Forster? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, uh, Joyce, for your question. I would need to take that on notice. As, as the CEO has said, that's quite a complicated question. We'd like to fully research that and, and provide you with a detailed answer. Yes, that'd be excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Ms Weatherall. Thank you. Um, the next speaker we have this evening is Dominic Bakari of Keysborough. Thank you, Mr. Bakari. Good evening, and um, welcome, Ms. Weatherall, to Dandenong. Um, I've got three questions I'd like to ask you all. Um, I'll start with question two, if I can. Um, the residents from the city of Greater Dandenong would like to understand: Have council have, have councillors the ability to claim expenses for meetings and events? in our municipality as well as outside the municipality? What rules are in place and how is it managed by council? Thank you, Mr Bakari. Uh, Ms Roberts. Thanks, Dom, for the question and through you, Mayor. Uh, we do have a councillor expenses, accountability and reimbursement policy <coughs> that's been um, developed under the Local Government Act. All councils in Victoria must have a councillor expenses policy. So that is available on the website and it's currently under review. And that details what expenses are paid for um, quite in detail. So I can send that to you or you can have a look on the website under the councillors page. Thanks, Ms Roberts. Thank you, Ms Roberts. <coughs> Mr Bakari. Uh, my third question. Um, early last year, it was reported to Council and the EPA that the City of Greater Dandenong has only one EPA air testing device far away from the, to the toxic industrial zone in Dandenong, Ordish Road. Since then, I personally met with both Councillors Mimendi and Garrard and the EPA, 
and council officers have met about this urgent matter to investigate and install a second air testing device uh, much closer to the toxic zone near Ordish Road. When will an additional air monitor be installed and where? If not, why not? Thank you, Mr Bakari. Mr Bosman. Madam Mayor, thank you through yourself, Dom. Um, the conversations with EPA is ongoing. In fact, there's a meeting coming up again um, the day after tomorrow on, on Wednesday. Um, it was part of the um, advocacy that this council made prior to the, in the lead up to the last state election, um, and in fact, post election as well, to the ministers who took over the portfolios, the responsible portfolios, EPA amongst them. So we have got traction there. Um, the EPA have been a lot more active in the last couple of months with regard to the topic that you've raised. And we are hoping that together with their, um, let's call it their research unit, their technical experts in that area, that we will have a community consultation session notified by them to the community. And that coming out of that, there will be a, uh, an understanding by them and a review by them in terms of the need for and the placement of another air monitoring um, station. In addition to the air monitoring, we've also raised with the EPA the need to do water quality monitoring, not just air monitoring. So this is something that I'm pleased to say that in the last month or so has really picked up. Um, they are now being more engaging, more actively engaged with us, seeking the um, collaboration of our officers. It went very quiet for a while, but it seems that we've got that now back on track. So hopefully you will see something soon. Thank you. Will we have that notification? It's difficult to say. The notification um, Dom, will come from the EPA itself, but obviously the advocacy that we um, put forward pre-state election, the letters to the ministers post-election, um, I think they've had some um, impact, certainly from the point of view that there's been active engagement by the EPA of ourselves, of the officers, with a view of answering just the very questions that you've asked tonight. I don't know when it is that they will be giving us that advice or those dates, but you can be sure that we will keep the pressure on to have that as soon as possible. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Mr. Bosman. Mr. Bakari. Yep. Um, now, question number one. <clears throat> um, my question tonight surrounds a councillor seeking reimbursement from the Danon Council to cover legal, to, to cover the cost of a legal matter that this is cer this certain councillor has against another resident. Back then, it was uh, against another councillor. Can Greater Danong uh, residents request that all councillors reject the request for refund or a, a remuneration refund to the councillor in question? Um, the reason we ask for this is we ask that you all consider the document that the previous CEO, John, Mr John Benny, um, wrote on the 4th of February, stating it had nothing to do with council and it was a matter for two residents. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Bakari. Uh, Ms. Weatherall. Um, I think Mr. Bakari is speaking to the councillors in regards to a matter that may be coming before the council. So I'll leave that for councillors noting. Thank you, Ms. Weatherall. Ms. Weatherall, are there any um, questions to be tabled from the previous council meeting? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, the question was from Mr Bakari. Has Council contributed 200000 towards a community park, which is on par private property? Has our Council contributed 200000 towards a community park land that is inside private property? And if so, why, as the wider community cannot access this park that's on private property? And the summary of the um, response provided by the Director, City Planning, Design and Amenity was um, he took that on notice um, and the resident has been contacted on the 14th of December and we're awaiting a response and still on the 23rd of January no response was received by the resident. The question is now considered complete. Thank you Ms Weatherall. Looks like a thumbs up from um, Mr Bakari. Um, item 4.1, contracts. 4.1.1, contract number 
Ross Reserve Athletics Track Reconstruction. Is the Moved by Councillor O'Reilly, seconded by Second, seconded by Deputy Mayor Councillor Formoso. Are there any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Yes, Councillor Milkovich. Yeah, just like to know uh, how much has this project actually been more expensive than from the original quotes that we were originally budgeted for? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's probably two parts to that that uh, that answer. One is that the project was always going to be undertaken over two financial years because of the nature of the construction. Um, and the, 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 the amount in the budget was for the first part of that, with the need to then um, budget in the second half of the year. Um, but within that, even with, within the estimate, the uh, tenders did come in higher than that, and we find that there's sometimes they're higher, sometimes they're lower. In this case, um, they were, were higher, than, higher than anticipated. Um, but we still consider that to be value for money, given what the, uh, the, the market's doing at the moment. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Any further questions? Yeah. Can, can the residents be told how much more high or how much more expensive the project was than originally anticipated? That's what I'd like to hear in dollar terms, approximately. Mr Trinkogana? Yeah, no, how much was it more than what was originally quoted? Yes, Mayor. The, the, original, the, the estimate for the works to be undertaken over two financial years was $5.5 million. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Um, Councillor Garrett, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is follow-on from um, Councillor uh, Mirkovic's question um, regarding the extraordinary um, conflation of cost and what, uh, what part of, of COVID has contributed to that extraordinary increase in cost. Thank you, Councillor Garrett. Mr Trinkogana? The... Um yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily direct it, directly attribute the extra cost to COVID, but we did find that during the COVID period, we were getting very good uh, tenant submissions at lower prices because there wasn't as much work around and there was a, a lot more competition in the market. Now that we've recovered from that area and there is a lot of both private work and uh, government funding that we're finding it, that we get less, less submissions, so there's a bit less competition for our, uh, our works such as this. Thank you, Mr. Trinkogana. Any further questions? Is there any opposition? Here's got opposition. Okay, so moved. It was moved by Councillor O'Reilly. Um, would you like to speak to the item? Yes, yes please, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Well, the detail of uh, what Council is planning to do is in the agenda, so I won't. Um, go over all of that, but the main points are that um, this uh, athletics track reconstruction uh, supports our largest athletics club in Greater Dandenong, and these clubs and users have been patient for several years, Mayor, uh, while everything else has been going on around them um, with a track that has fallen uh, multiple times into disrepair. It's had to be patched up um, by council and it is progressively aged to the point where it uh, is virtually unusable. And uh, as uh, the ever well, an example of this, Mayor, is that uh, there has been safety incidents on this track, including uh, broken arms. So. I think um, this club, which is a strong club, uh, should be supported. It's been consulted by officers as to uh, the design and scope of this. We have put it out to tender. The market price has been tested by the tender process. Uh, as councillors, we certainly don't want to pay any more than we need to, but uh, this is what it costs to uh, revitalise this particular track, our only um, synthetic track in Greater Dandenong, and I don't think we should be putting anything like this on hold. The club and users have waited so long, so I think uh, we should just get on with it, um, Mayor, and I commend this to the Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Formosa, would, as seconder, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would also like to um, 
agree with my fellow councillor, Sean O'Reilly. Um, this is an absolute must for our community. Um, as a PE teacher in this uh, local community, I can tell you firsthand that we have to travel to um, Duncan McKinnon Reserve um, very, very often to attend athletic meets, as do probably all of the schools in our municipality. Our residents deserve this. I understand that the costs are... Um, <laughs> Not great, um, but if you look back at, um, I was just looking at some of the figures of uh, Duncan McKinnon Reserve, and they spent over eight million back in 2014 to build their complex, and it's state of the art, and uh, our residents deserve it. I think that it's long overdue. It's um, been established since 1968. This is the essence of our community and um, such a great um, club that's doing incredible things, and we'll continue to do once we build this track. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Formoso. Councillor Dark, as uh, the councillor opposing this item, would you like to speak? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I rise to oppose this motion. And before uh, this council meeting, I did speak to Councillor O'Reilly and, and did express concerns that the item should be deferred. Uh, I understand where he's coming from, particularly given uh, of where the current infrastructure is at place, where the tender is at place. But I have some deep, deep concerns about this. The first, having an item blow out $4 million uh, is first and foremost a significant issue. And it is something that this council cannot afford, the ratepayers cannot afford, to continuously keep trying to find millions of dollars every time a project has a massive overrun. But the biggest issue that I have with this project is the lack of consultation with the club itself. Um, and I find this absolutely extraordinary. After six and a half years in this council, how such a systematic error could possibly be made with a tender such as this. Um, in the gallery, we have three people from the Spring Valley Athletics Club who are here tonight. There was a committee meeting held on the 18th of January expressing concern about what has been put forward by the athletics, uh, put forward by council in terms of the tender, the layout and the design. This council and the sports and rec department, which consistently over the summer break I continuously heard issues about, managed to have a consultation with Athletics Victoria and not Little Athletics Victoria, which are two separate groups. Little Athle Athletics Victoria, being the Springvale Little Athletics Club, uh, other, other club and the group that oversees the operations of Little Athletics. So this council has gone out for tender, this club has done detailed design and gone out including things such as steeplechase, pole vaulting, hammer throw, in a facility that Little Athletics cannot play. It is against the rules of their constitution. And today I confirm with Little Athletics Victoria that Little Athletics uh, age out 16, 17 with approval from the club and that it prohibited uses are steeplechase, pole vaulting and hammer throw. So this council is creating a facility, spending $4 million more, well over budget, for an item and a facility that the actual club can't even use. I, I, I just find it absolutely outrageous to have this council now going down the path of spending all this money building a facility that the three volunteers here are having to get their members, get people to come to when you have 194 kids, to build a facility that doesn't work is just <laughs> unbelievably, I just can't get my head around it. The fact that you've also got what they do want and what they actually do need that hasn't been properly consulted with them, uh, upgrades to the facilities. The toilets are abhorrent. Um, you, wouldn't go, you wouldn't walk in it. They stink, they are run down, they are not safe at, by any means for kids to go in and out of. Um, and if I was a parent and I had my kid in little athletics, I'd be shocked of the way the facilities are. And to have the fact that they still have 194 kids going in, in and out, playing little athletics with subpar facilities is 100% why it is imperative that this council gets everything right that the little athletics club need. Because there's no Athletics Victoria, there's no seniors. The seniors play in regional facilities. Uh, and as Councillor Formoso said before, the Duncan McKinnon Reserve, Pakenham has a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Casey Fields has regional facilities. Frankston has Ballon Park. We are surrounded by state-of-the-art regional facilities. There's no requirement for the city of Great Dandenong to have a regional facility of adding more regional facilities in one region. It just makes no sense. So what should have happened with this item should have been deferred. They should have actually had proper consultation with the president, the secretary and the board members about what their club actually needs. And that is why I will not be supporting this tonight. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Are there any other speakers either for or against this motion? Uh, yes, you may. 
Councillor Garrett. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I I'm quite disturbed to hear this information for the first time before I vote. I'd just like to seek further clarification from Councillor Dark, if that's possible. Um, I'm moving for this notion to get deferred until we get right information in regards to what is actually being proposed and what's satisfactory to the club and, and their members here before we spend additional $4 million on top of what was already budgeted. I think it's quite disturbing that these facts have come to light just now. I think we need to look at it properly. And if, if the facility for that kind of money is not what the club will, will use and need, we need to stop this and find out what is happening. I'll second it. Um, firstly, are the mover and seconder happy to um, defer, defer the motion? No, for, okay. okay. So, um, we need to deal with what's on the table. It's okay. We're, we're just getting further clarification of the next steps. Yep, that's okay. We, it's okay. Now we just need to um, put the. Now we need to put the substantive motion to the side and deal with the deferral motion, which is moved by Councillor Miltovic and seconded by Councillor Dark. Is that correct? Yes. Just put the substantive motion to the side for the moment. There's no, no, there's no secrecy. It's just a matter of um, process. That's OK. Um, okay, okay. So, so moved, moved by Councillor Milkovich, seconded by Councillor Dark. Um, the deferral motion. So, is there any opposition? Uh, before I go to that, my apologies. Are there any questions regarding the deferred motion? So, Councillor Garrard, <laughs> you've got a question. <laughs> So we do a circle. Um, I would like to ask uh, more detail from Councillor Dark um, regarding the concerns. So what I'm understanding you saying is that the um, existing groups will not be able to use the facility once it's upgraded in this way, that the plan itself is not fit for purpose for uh, the current users of the facility and that we might be, sent, be spending $6.7 million uh, for an upgrade that people will not use. Is, am I hearing this correctly? Uh, so, Councillor Dar, would you thank like to you respond? Thank you through you, Mayor, to Councillor Goward. Yes, exactly, 100 per cent. Uh, and the three uh, members of the committee, I'm sure, will be able to talk after to raise the concerns they attended tonight out of concerns of the fact that we're agreeing or putting something to a vote that is not fit for purpose and doesn't suit them. So we have the benefit of having them in the gallery. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Uh, yes, Councillor O'Reilly, you've got a question? Uh, yeah, I've got a question regarding the um, deferral. So, uh, um, regarding the reasons for deferment, um, why won't, why has this just come up in the last five minutes, these reasons being, uh, in, councillors have been informed of all these concerns when uh, the councillor has, has had ample opportunity given that this uh, item has been on the notice paper for over a week. Um, why, how are we supposed to um, give those concerns any validity at all when we've had no time to cross-check them, to validate them, um, you know, to the contention that the leadership in the gallery is agreeing with what everything that Councillor Dark is saying? I just, I just think... Um, to defer um, a motion based on um, allegations um, brought up at the last minute would be bad practice, a bad decision-making practice of this uh, council. So the question is, Mayor, to the um, mover um, of the deferment, um, why weren't these concerns brought up uh, previously? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Councillor Milkovic, would you uh, like thank to Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I think as my duty towards our residents as, as councillors who are making these important decisions is that if information does come to light within five minutes of the meeting or during the meeting, it is our duty to actually look Can, at them objectively. Sorry to interrupt, Councillor Milkovic. I just want to remind councillors that we're not up to debate yet. We're, we are no, no, just up to the questions. Councillor asked the question. I think it's, it's valid to answer the question. Yeah, all 
Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to you run for 20 minutes. No, it's not a problem. But I'm saying if Councillor Dark has come with an information that Little Athletics Victoria have not been consulted by council officers as to what facility is required, but yet have actually consulted Athletics Victoria, which is not going to be using the facility, then what are we doing here? I mean, the cost is one thing. I'm outraged by the fact that the costs are, are constantly being blown out of the proportions, and you know, we constantly run over budget with these things. Yes, COVID, you know, obviously contributed to that, and the and cost of construction has gone up. I understand all that, but we're not talking about twenty dollars here. This is six point. What is it? I've lost track. Six point six seven million dollar project that might not be fit. So, I, I think we need to exercise caution. Thank you, councillors. Okay. Are there any more questions? I'm losing track of where we're going. Any more questions, councillors? No. Right. All right. Is there any opposition to the deferral? No. Okay. Councillor O'Reilly in opposition. So as the mover, Councillor Milkovich, now we can um, debate. Would you like to speak so we to debate. your Thank you, Madam move? Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, well, you I think I don't think it needs much explanation why we should defer this motion is because we just don't know what is going on. We don't know if the right people have been consulted. We've got the representatives of the club here, which I haven't spoken to myself, but obviously, according to Councillor Dark and, and an email printout that he's got there, the facility might not be fit for purpose. We're talking about millions of dollars of ratepayers' money that are going to get spent and wasted, potentially, on something that the kids can't use. So I, I don't think you, you need to be a rocket scientist to work out that we need to put a stop to this right now until we get further facts and evidence as to what is going on. And if the plans need to be redrawn, rewritten, replanned, retended, or whatever, then we owe it as, as, as councillors to the ratepayers to make sure that we give them the best possible outcome for their dollars. It's, it's not that hard. We can't be reckless. It is not our money. Thank you, Councillor Milkovich. Uh, Councillor Dark is the seconder to the deferral. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, oh, oh, we're going around. I feel this is just. Uh, uh, I'm in shock. I suppose is probably the word to say. The, the fact is that there's no requirement to, to provide any information until such time as it's there. And uh, given that Councillor Riley is warded, why you wouldn't fact check information uh, is is one thing beyond me. For, for the record. Uh, after the, the council briefing session, which this matter was discussed, and um, I asked questions of the sports and rec department, I independently verified that because I became aware, of, as I said over summer, that there was a lot of information, a lot of concerns coming from within the sports and recreation department, and I thought I would independently reach out. And I was shocked with what the response was when I reached out to the club. Um, the fact that they came back very, very quickly, saying, Look, we do have some concerns, um, and then once they saw the agenda became public, they then had a committee meeting. The committee meeting then ran through all of the concerns. And to give you an idea, um, the email was quite extensive, uh, and I'm sure that the club will happily talk to all officers and all councillors after. But to give you an idea, um, they say, uh, uh, thank you for reaching out following um, the Lip Ross Reserve Little Athletics refurbishment. Um, the committee met recently to discuss the matter uh, and agreed that the time frame of two to two and a half years has never been discussed and is d deep concern to them. The following is a list of things to run a successful little athletics program. Uh, a new all-weather track. We recommend that there needs to go down quite a few metres to remove the old tracks underneath, as the council has just been patching on top. Um, better wheelchair access, recommending that two pubs around the outside of the soccer club and the athletics club for the user of the wheelchair safety, two permanent discus nets to compete with tie-down equipment, two permanent shot ring puts, four jump, pit, uh, jump pits, two at each end of a single run track, permanent high jump mat. There's things that the club needs desperately to be able to function as a little athletics club. To be in a position where we are now, where basically we're going to build something that doesn't comply with what they're after, is of deep concern. And I think that's why the item should be deferred. Should it be should it be killed off? Um, well, look, absolutely not. What I do want, and what I think every councillor wants, are state-of-the-art facilities in this municipality, making sure that they have everything they possibly need. But what certainly I think the council needs to do is to go have conversations with the club, the people are here today, have a base conversation, have a meeting later, and make sure they have everything they need. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Um, I believe uh, Mr Chinkwagana may be able to respond to some of your questions. Would you like him to perhaps... Um... Well, uh, Mayor, I think that it's probably best yes. that given where we are now at the moment, given we're at tender and everything like that as well, and I understand that Mr Chinkwagana uh, and Mr Forster would be across a lot of the detail, um, given we have the President, the Secretary uh, and a committee member here as well, that they should be 
conversations had at a later stage rather than debating, given the list is quite extensive, um, and I'll make this available after. I think the item is best deferred pending conversations with the club. Sorry, need, need to speak I've got, um, um, Councillor O'Reilly, as um, first opposition. Is there anyone else? No, I think. Uh, th thank you, Mayor. Well, uh, now Councillor Dark has uh, fleshed out that he's been in contact with the club with all these uh, concerns. And, um, Mayor, I'm the ward councillor, and I haven't heard any of what Councillor Dark um, has been talking about up until the last 10 minutes. So, and well, it w I would appreciate. Um, being the ward councillor, that councillor Dark would at least keep me in the loop. You know, I, I, if he did have concerns, rather than you know me requesting to him if he does have information, him not providing it or calling me back, and then um, bringing up stuff in the council chamber. But the main thing, the main thing, um, Mayor, is um, we should make no mistake that if. Um, this is deferred with the intention of a scope change, which uh, the intention appears to be from Councillor Dark that, uh, as this has already been through the whole design and tender process, that uh, this would delay the delivery of, a track, of the track by at least a year. Um, the club would be displaced by an additional year and uncertainty... Um, for the club uh, would would uh, be extended um, by about, about May a year. I'd like to move for the motion to be put so we can put a vote to this and, and get can it done. There's no point the in debating now. Like, as, Councillor as Milkovich, please to allow Councillor uh, O'Reilly to continue, please. Rather than being gagged. Um, so it would also reduce confidence in the council um, by sporting clubs and by the uh, successful tenderers in the council puts things out to tender and then for reasons brought up in the last 10 minutes in the council chamber just um, says no we're going to have another stab at that so so um, there, there's multiple reasons not to um, defer this um, or if there was valid reasons then they should have been brought up a lot sooner than uh, us sitting in, in this Council Chamber. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Councillor Milkovich, did you...? I'm moving for the motion to be put. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? So moved by Councillor Milkovich um, for a motion to be put, uh, seconded by Councillor Dark. Um, is there any opposition to that? This, so this is the... This is a motion to put this um, deferral to vote. Okay, all right. So, yep, so we will... S sorry, Mayor, just for clarification. This is the, to motion to put the deferral... To, to, to vote. move the demeral, deferral motion. Yes. That it, it's to be moved, um, you know, it's subject to conversations with the Springvale Little Athletics Club. Yep. yep. I've got my head around now. Yep. Yeah. yes. Uh, sorry, I'm still not clear. Is this a procedural motion to hold the vote or is this the vote? This is the vote. This okay. Is the this vote. is a deferral vote. This is a motion to put the motion to the vote. Okay. Okay. Is there any opposition to put the motion to the vote? That is what we are. That's what's been moved. Is there any opposition to put the movement? Sorry, to put the motion to vote. The deferral motion to vote. No. Okay. Is there anyone? Okay, I say that we put it to a vote. Um, so, all those in favour of the deferral motion, uh, please raise your hand. So, no. Councillor Milkovich, Councillor Dark, and Councillor Garrard all vote to defer the motion. All those against deferring the motion, Councillor Lim, Councillor Mehmeti, Councillor for Deputy Mayor Formoso, Councillor Long, Councillor Tan, 
myself, Councillor O'Reilly, and myself, Councillor Foster. That was three for the deferral. My maths is not great at the moment. Thank you, seven, seven um, against the deferral of the motion. So. Thank you. It's open to anyone else to okay, thank you. So now we return back to the substantive motion, which is again 4.1.1, contract number 2223 11 Ross Reserve Athletics Track Reconstruction. And we are up to. Um, it's open to debate. Okay, we're, op we're open to debate. So are there any further speakers, either for or against? We Yes, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Um, I read that the, there's an article out, Ross Reserve Athletic Track Redevelopment. It says we're going to build a World Athletics Certificate 2 standard. Can somebody explain what that means? Thank you. Mr Trinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that, it's a set of standards developed by the world body, but the Certificate 2 means local level. So it's not, an international, it's not for holding international events or national events, it's for holding local regional events, um, but it uses the international standards as far as you know, widths of lanes and, and the, uh, the specifics that go with those things. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have two questions. One was, was the Little Athletics Association consulted in the development of this, um, this design process? And were the users of the uh, facility also consulted? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Counts um, Mr Trinkogana. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, consult the consultation was quite broad because it is more than just the club use. There are um, both informal users and there's many of the local schools use it. So it, the consult, consultation was for, with the view to it being a broader community facility, and it was broader than just the, um, just the club. Uh, the second part of my question was, was Little, Little Athletics Association um, involved in the development of this? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Mr Trinkogana. Uh, I'll have to seek clarity on that. Uh, you took it not the club, but the, the governing body. Um, not as far as I know, but I'd, I'd, I'd have to uh, get that clarified with the sport and recreation people. Okay. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Are there any other speakers for or against that haven't yet spoken? Okay. Um, so Sorry, Madam Mayor. So yes. just, to, just to be clear, the club wasn't actually consulted, but the bodies, governing bodies were consulted. But the club wasn't consulted at all, yeah? Is that, is that the answer to the question? That. It's a pretty simple question. It's either yes or no. Mr Trinkogana. Yes, the club was consulted. Okay. Thank you, Mr Trinkogana. Um, so, Councillor O'Reilly, as the mover to the substantive motion, would you like to have a right of reply? Um... Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. So, we've, we've gone through all the reasons to proceed with this and some reasons that we can't verify um, because they're so re recently brought up um, against it. So, for the... For, and, and really, if there was substantial reasons not to proceed with um, this mayor, they should have been, and if they were uh, valid, verifiable, um, they should have been brought up um, much sooner. Uh, I think as decision makers, we should expect um, that as a minimum to make uh, sound and uh, just decisions rather than... You know, reasons just coming out uh, uh, that could potentially derail what has been a thoroughly consulted um, and, and worked out with uh, all stakeholders. Um, it's been a, a, probably a multi-year um, process. Myself and uh, Councillor Formoso have been in video meetings with the um, club and council, so we definitely know that the club have, have been consulted. Um, I spoke with a club representative uh, today, Mayor, and uh, um, overall is extremely happy with um, this 
a plan and that council is going to make a decision on it. So uh, I think um, this, uh, this needs to go ahead. We can't afford to defer it dilly-dally. Um, and uh, I think uh, what we should be doing tonight is uh, giving it the big stamp of approval and can then, the club then has certainty and we can celebrate with the club. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Um, so we will now vote on the um, substantive motion. Um, unless there are any other speakers. No? You've had right of reply. So, yeah. No more speakers. Yeah. It's OK. Um, so all those in favour of the substantive motion, please raise your hand. So Councillor O'Reilly, Councillor Tan, Councillor Long, Councillor Foster, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Formoso, Councillor Mametti, Councillor Lim. All those against the substantive motion, Councillor Milkovic, Councillor Dark and Councillor Garrard. Um, so that's seven for the motion, so the motion 7-3. Um, for the motion, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mametti. Something, uh, this is uh, fantastic for little athletics in our city. Unfortunately, this uh, Ross Reserve facility is completely run down. Uh, about 18 months ago, an older person was running and broke her arm. Uh, we did some minor work to patch this track up, um, and it's definitely not up to par. Um, I wouldn't want kids or elderly people uh, running and, and, and on that facility at the moment. I mean, I know uh, this probably, this actually, councillors probably didn't understand this motion. Uh, $2.5 million was put in the budget last year. Councillors thought that's all it's going to cost. Uh, to, in, this, in this motion today, uh, it's gone up to $6.6 .6 million. There was a concern of how this cost has escalated to this much. Um, so that was a concern. But this community will benefit. Uh, thousands and thousands of school children will benefit. Uh, many more will start to participate in having a state-of-the-art facility. So um, I congratulate uh, councillors for making this decision and I look forward to making sure that the council work with the Little Athletics Club uh, going forward from today. Um, and I'm, I know you as mayor will make sure that that happens. And as councillors, we will all make sure that that happens and uh, we'll deliver a first-class facility for our residents. Thank you, Councillor Mamedi. Uh, Deputy Mayor, did you... Councillor Formoso? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to um, thank my fellow councillors for obviously voting for what was an absolute must for our community. Um, you know, this, this facility has been run down since the 80s and we've been patching it up since then. The last patch-up we did was 2012. Um, our community deserves this track most certainly. Um, I think moving forward, this was imperative for this to occur because all it would have done is just delayed it even further, um, which we absolutely don't want for our residents. Um, the only thing that I would urge is that all of the people that are in the gallery today as committee members, council, yourself, our community rec team and the ward councillor get together and have a, a, a conversation and a meeting, one of which um, Councillor Sean O'Reilly and myself have already participated in, but we're happy to iron out some of the kinks. I know the issues that they are referring to are minor concerns, all of which can still take place. The imperative issue here was for us to move forward um, with, the, with the build of this track. It cannot wait any longer. And uh, I'd like to thank all my councillors for doing what is absolutely um, right and just. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Formoso. Uh, Councillor Garrett. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that I think we're all in furious agreement that this facility needs upgrading. That has not been in doubt tonight. But when you are spending $6.7 million, you need to be sure of what you're doing. And when there are um, concerns raised of that scale that we may not have got it right, I think it is um, right and proper that um, you know, councillors do um, t pick up on that and, uh, and, and, and try to make sure that we are sure and certain that we have got it right before we spend $6.7 million. Thank you, Councillor Garrard. 
I'll now move on to item 4.1.2, contract number 2223-27, Railway Parade Shopping Strip Streetscape Upgrade. Moved. Move. Happy to move that, Madam Mayor. Seconded. Seconded. Moved by Councillor Dark, seconded by Councillor Mametti. Are there any questions? Councillor Garrard. Uh, just on the theme of consultation there, uh, can we be reassured that the, uh, shop, uh, the shop owners have been thoroughly con uh, consulted in this process? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Mr Chinkugana. Oh, yes, Mayor, there's been a thorough consultation process and we'll be, we're committing to working with the traders as we do the works, um, which we're well experienced with, with these streetscape works, knowing the complexity of them. Thank you, Mr Chinkugana. Any other questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Uh, Mayor. Yes, Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. I just wish to thank my council colleagues for this item. I actually uh, was going through my emails and I discovered when I turned on my laptop that you can actually download from server. And I found emails from 2017 when this was first raised uh, and it was championed by former councillor uh, Maria Sampi. Uh, she actually went to the butcher shop, according to the email, and I do recall. Uh, and during that item where she did that, she expressed that um, her ward was looking better than mine at the time. Um, and then from that, there was a lot of consultation with the groups, the shop traders there, particularly the dry cleaner, um, a couple of the restaurants as well. As the shops have had their turnover, a lot of them have opened restaurants, and it's become very, very, very hard, particularly with the Irani, Iranian uh, Pakistan groups, to be able to have um, enough car parking there when they have customers come. So certainly this has taken a long time to get to the stage where it is now. I know all of the shop traders are very, very excited, including the um, Turkish halal butcher, which is probably the best halal butcher in the city of Greater Dandenong. Um, and I think it's, it's definitely worthwhile, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, this upgrade come for a lot of future businesses. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Couldn't agree someone? more. Thank you. Thank Madam you, Councillor Mimetti. As you didn't have the opportunity to move, I've been in your ward. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I know you were part of the consultation, and it was really good that we did get some funding from the state government. I think it was $200,000 towards this project. Um, it's get, if you walk down that strip there, it's uneven. It's had damage. Uh, and now what we're going to do, we're going to bring uh, replace all the footpaths there, uh, bring more trees, more street furniture, and uh, they've been since it was last done in 1988. So it's uh, due, and um, I look forward to that happening. And uh, it is very busy, as Councillor Dark said. I don't think there's an empty shop in that strip. So uh, uh, I think they will all also appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mametti. Councillor Tan, did you want to speak to that? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to say um, yeah, thank you to the state government as well for contribute funding to council. So around 200,000. Yep. So thank you for their contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tan. Councillor Garrard. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to um, reiterate uh, or agree with Councillor Dark that um, having shopped there for 20 years, that is the best halal butcher in Dandenong. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Garrard. <laughs> <laughs> Item 4.2, other. 4.2.1, Cultural Heritage Advisory Committee, updated terms of reference. Do I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded by Me. Councillor Long. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.2, recommended applicant for the Disability Advisory Committee. Is there a mover for this recommendation? Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded by Councillor Long. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.3, draft minutes of Community Safety Advisory Committee meeting, 9th November 2022. Moved Move. by Councillor Long, seconded by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.4, draft minutes of Arts Advisory Board meeting, 22nd November 2022. Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded by Councillor Lim. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.5, 
draft minutes of multicultural and people seeking asylum advisory committee meeting, 6th December 2022. Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded, seconded by Councillor Lim. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.6. Draft Minutes of Positive Ageing Advisory Committee Meeting, 8th December 2022. Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded. Seconded by Councillor Mimetti. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.7, Draft Minutes of Disability Advisory Committee Meeting, 12th of December 2022. Moved by Councillor Garrard, seconded by Councillor Lim. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.8, draft minutes of Springvale Community Hub Committee meeting, 13th of December 2022. Moved by Councillor Lim, seconded by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare this item carried. Item 4.2.9, list of registered correspondents to Mayor and Councillors. Moved by Councillor Mametti, seconded by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Yes, Councillor Tim. Councillor Dark, my apologies. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I note that we received a letter of thanks to me from residents of Argdale Road, Noble Park. I, I haven't received that letter, so I'm actually quite excited. If governance could please send that through, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Dark. I'm sure we can arrange for that uh, letter to be forwarded on to you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Is there any opposition? As there's no opposition, I declare that item carried. Item five, notices of motions. I don't believe we have any notices of motion, so we'll move on to item six. Reports from councillors, delegated members and councillor questions. I'll start with Councillor O'Reilly. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. I um, uh, attended a few events like the Springvale Lunar New Year, but I think other councillors will uh, no doubt uh, mention those in detail. Just say it's great to uh, start a new year on council, new CEO, the weather's good. Um, it's going to be a challenging year, probably the most challenging financially uh, for council, but I think we're all up to um, make the hard, decision, hard and fair decisions and... Uh, uh, I look forward to the year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Councillor Tan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, firstly, welcome to our first council meeting for this year. And I just want to say a Happy New Year to everyone who's celebrating the New Year, uh, which is Lunar New Year on Sunday. Um, Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year and Tamil New Year. So we've got a few um, different multicultural celebrating New Year. Um, the last aware now at two, which is the um, on the fifteenth of uh, January, yet the Springvale Lunar New Year Festival, which is the opening ceremony. So the year of the rabbit and also the year of the cat. That's for Vietnamese, uh, which is hosted by the Springvale uh, Asian Business Association. Uh, thank you for the group for doing their great job. So this is the first um, celebration, uh, celebration since um, COVID, which is. You know, um, well, it's not um, compared to a few years before. We got a lot more um, resident attending, but just um, really because COVID is still, it's not the end of COVID yet. So people still feel, you know, um, kind of going out and then uh, restricted in a way. But we did a great job as a council all together. Um, my question for tonight through you, uh, Mayor. Um, through the relevant office, uh, officers, so this is to do with the um, the Department of Transport um, report that we're waiting on. This is for the roundabout, the Hedderton uh, roundabout. Uh, we're wait 
well, last year was, um, this is from, I got the date right, so April 2022. We're waiting on the Department of Transport report. Um, this is on ongoing major infrastructure around the area. So I just want to find out what's the update on that. Thank you, Councillor Tan. Mr Trinkagana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no, I don't have anything to update on that uh, tonight. I'll follow it up and see if there's any news with the Department of Transport. Thank you. Councillor Tan. Thank you. And also, I just want to say uh, thank you to our um, business and major projects, especially with the um, park and team for doing their great job. So now, Noble Park um, Reserve, so playground has been completed. Also with the, um, the shade cell as well, so it's already completed. So thank you for your hard work. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Tan. Councillor Garrard. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would also like to welcome our new CEO, Jackie Weatherall, and we're all looking, uh, looking forward very much to working with her. Um, I would like to thank uh, all the residents in the City of Greater Dandenong. Uh, I wish them a, a happy 2023, hopefully a peaceful 2023. Uh, the residents, my fellow councillors and uh, council staff. Uh, my first question tonight, um, Madam Mayor, through you is uh, regarding an update. The residents are very keen to have an update on the Keysborough South um, Progress Hub. Pro pro progress. Could we have an update, please? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Mr Chinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, the council offices are coming very close to the conclusion of the tendering process. So there's been a significant tendering process and evaluation. Uh, they're now looking at preparing a report for council uh, to go to council in February. Thank you, Mr Trinkagana. Councillor Garrard. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, during uh, the last state election, uh, the council put forward an ambitious um, advocacy plan. Uh, can we have an update on whether we were successful in any of the items we put forward? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Ms Sprague. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Garrard, for that question. The projects and issues that formed our key advocacy prior to the state election have not been successful through specific pre-election commitments or promises as such. However, Greater Dandenong Council has an excellent track record for the receipt of grant funding. Already this financial year, we've been allocated over $4 million in grant funding. And of course, prior to the federal election, we had the $20 million commitment of funding for aquatic facilities. Thank you, Ms Sprague. Councillor Garrett? Uh, sorry, Madam Mayor, I just don't understand what was actually successful. Um, I'm not sure that that was answered uh, completely. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. We, we weren't successful in getting any specific grants from the election, but I think the point um, Sprague's trying to make is that prior to the election, we'd had some significant um, grant funding. So, you know, it's likely that the state government felt that we'd been successful on a range of things prior to the election period. OK, so we didn't get it from the election. Um, also, can we have an update on the progress of the Dandenong Art Gallery? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Mr Chinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Um, perhaps I'll provide the update in three parts. Uh, there's a bit of work going on in site. So at the moment, we're uh, connecting services to the, uh, the PEP building behind, um, which will then clear the, clear the site for reinstatement of the steel structure. So at the moment, the steel structure has been removed, it's being refurbished, uh, then it'll be reassembled. So that'll be ready to go once we've cleared, the, well, once we've connected those services. And finally, we're working with the current contractor to develop an agreement so that we can work out a way to, to deliver the project much more quickly uh, and to keep it moving forward after being stalled for some time. Thank you, Mr Chinkagana. Councillor Garrett. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my next question is... What is the status and timeframes of the feasibility study into the Greater Dandenong Traditional Owner Gathering Place? Mr Forster, please. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the feasibility study report is available for public viewing on Council's website. Due to the significance of the police paddock site referenced in the report, Bunner and Land Council has advised that they intend to take a thorough historical investigation before any future use or management decisions are made. In June 2022, they advised this process will probably take longer than 12 months to complete. Bunurong Land Council have requested that no further actions be undertaken by Dandenong Council in relation to the police paddocks or surround until this work is complete. The Council report will then be prepared following the completions of their investigations. Thank you, Mr Forster. Councillor Garrard. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, the current Greater Dandenong Playground strategy uh, runs out this year. What is, uh, when is a new one going to be developed? 
Thank you. Uh, Mr Chinkagana, please. I thank you, Mayor. The, the review of the, of the Greater Jenny Nong Playground Strategy is currently scheduled to commence in the financial year 2023-2024 uh, um, and we'll be providing Council with further details about that review once we get started. Thank you. Councillor Garrard, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, what is the status and timeframes of the Greater Dandenong Mobile Environment Trailer? Uh, this project has been going since mid-2020. Thank you. Mr Bosman, please. Madam Mayor, thank you to yourself. Councillor Garrard, a number of um, procurement approaches were taken um, over the last year in order to progress the development of the Mobile Environment Trailer. Um, this has included um, the open expression of interest process as well as targeted tender um, invitations to six different firms. We've tried all ways of trying to get people to, um, or interested parties, um, to come to the party with, um, with tenders. Unfortunately, no responses were received during either of those exercises and recognising it is difficult to um, attract tenderers in the current market, the Parks team, together with the sustainability team, are working to develop an alternative solution to deliver a trailer as soon as possible. And we'll come back to you, um, councillors, once we've come up with an alternative. The current, um, the current proposal, obviously, is not attractive to the market in any way, shape or form, so we're looking at what might be a feasible alternative. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bosman. Councillor uh, Thank Garrett. you. Through you, Mayor. Um, how is the Hemming Street Community Action Plan developing? When should there be something publicly available to promote to Dandenong residents more broadly? Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Mr. Forster, please. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, planning for the Hemming Street Community Action Plan is progressing well, with Year 1 actions scheduled to be finalised in early 2023. Year 2 actions have been proposed but further investigations by the Community Action Group is required before sign-off by the Department of Justice and Community Safety, who are the funding body for the Empowering Communities Grant Program. Once details of Year 1 actions are finalised, an update will be provided uh, on the relevant Council webpage. Thank you, Mr Forster. Uh, thank you, Mayor. My last question tonight is, when is the consultation uh, into the Tatchwoon Park Nature Trail going to start? Mr Chinkagana? Uh, Mayor, I'll have to take that uh, question on notice to get the, the details uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Long, please. Thank you. These are some of the events I've attended since my last formal meeting. Before Christmas, I represented Council at quite a few Christmas parties. The 31st of December, I attended the New Year's fireworks in Danong Park. It was a very hot night, but everyone enjoyed themselves. A big thank you to all the staff who organised the event. The 15th of January, I attended the Sabaluna New Year, the Year of the Rabbit at Springvale. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Councillor Mametti. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. And yes, uh, great to see our new CEO, uh, who's been with us for over a month now. And uh, we look forward to working with you this coming year and, and years to come. So it's great to have you on board. Uh, to the councillors, council staff, our community, I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Um, and just recently, uh, yesterday was uh, Chinese New Year. so. Um, we would say xin yen kuai le, that's one language. Gung hei fat choi, chuk mung na moi. Tuesday, shnam timai. Gizwar motiri, happy new year. That's in six languages. I thought that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> Question, um, Madam Mayor, uh, can we have an update on the upgrade of the kitchen at George Andrews Reserve? Thank you. Uh, Mr Chinkagana. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, um, so the, the work on the kitchen is continuing. Um, we've got uh, a number of trades that will be there tomorrow to, to recommence much of the work. There's been a slight delay with the extension, where, where it's being extended beyond its current footprint, while we need to do a bit more structural uh, structural documentation, but we're hoping that that, uh, that will be sorted out within a day or so and we'll be 
uh, back doing the, the finishing the complete project. Thank you. Councillor Mametti. Thank you for that update. Um, the club would like to request a meeting uh, with council officers uh, as their season will start in February. Uh, the kitchen was meant to be completed before the season starts. Uh, they have approximately between one and 2,000 visitors at their game. Uh, they would look, if, that, if, the if the canteen and the kitchen is not ready, they're looking at other alternatives, uh, maybe a temporary mobile kitchen. Uh, so they would like to have that meeting sooner than later because uh, February is just around the corner, if that's okay. Thank you, Councillor Mametti. Uh, Mr Chinkagana, please. Oh, yes, Mabel. Consultation with the club has been ongoing um, and we've kept them informed of what, what our progress is. Uh, we're also looking at options. If, if we are unable to complete it exactly uh, on time, then um, we're looking at those other options with them. And Thank so happy to meet with them specifically if that's uh, required. Thank you. Councillor Mametti. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, also, uh, just looking outside the window here, our, our lovely lights that light up the poles. Um, unfortunately, over the Christmas period, uh, I drive past and I see three are missing. Um, in previous years, this normally happens around this time of the year. Uh, we were meant to purchase a few extra and have them uh, aside. So when this does happen, we don't have to wait six months to order them. Uh, do we have an update when they will be replaced? Thank you. Mr Trinkagana, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, we're having a, a lot of difficulty because they don't manufacture those type of uh, globes anymore. We're looking at what options we can do to replace them with, like, for an example, an LED alternative. Um, but I think we're in a position where we're unable to continue replacing them as is. So that'll be part of a, a budget bid in Council's uh, CIP process. Thank you. Councillor Mametti. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. How that works. Um, I've got a good story, uh, Madam Mayor, which you already know and many in our community know. Um, last week I received a phone call from one of our residents, uh, very, very upset. Um, he did a very bad thing. He chucked his wife's jewellery in the rubbish bin, in the garbage bin. And uh, he did it accidentally. Um, so he called me very upset and, God, I thought, how am I going to help this guy? You know, uh, you know it's, 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 it can actually... Uh, end a relationship, throwing your wife's jewellery, because I know I'd be in a lot of trouble if I did that. Um, so anyway, we got into quick uh, action, uh, thanks to our personal assistant, uh, Joe Thorne, who uh, started making some phone calls um, after the resident uh, came to the council building and uh, I directed him to go to see Joe, uh, who then contacted our staff and uh, our staff then contacted JJ Richards, who picks up the rubbish as a contractor. And, um, you know, the, we located the track, which was fantastic. Um, our CEO and our acting director uh, made sure that we quarantined uh, the track. And uh, the following day, uh, we had the truck come to our depot and, and actually chuck the rubbish on the ground. And, uh, and a miracle happened. This resident, within five minutes or so, located the bag. Um, and he remembered that he had some clippings that he had chucked on top of the bin. So he looked under the nose of the clippings and the bag of gold was there. So uh, he asked me to thank everybody involved at council, uh, to JJ Ridges, our contractor, and uh, I think we might have saved the marriage, Madam Mayor. <laughs> so uh, congratulations to everyone, and that is a great outcome. And uh, we always don't get it right, but this time we did. Yep. Yep. Well done to the team. Thank you, Councillor Metti. Councillor Lim. Thank you, Mayor. Just, just the last couple of weeks were very busy. Actually, on the Tuesday, the 13th of December, had a meeting at Supreme Committee Hub, committee meeting. On Wednesday, the 14th of December, I had a, a chance to attend honorary, honor, honorary Justice of Peace Dinner that they really request uh, some issue, especially the room for the library at Dadelong and also at Supreme Court Hub, that one issue that we tried to resolve already. On the 15th, Thursday, the 15th of December, I had a chance to meet uh, Calister College principal. She asked me to meet her and also I invited uh, one the lady represent uh, Liberal Wealth, uh, Hepatitis of Victoria, to come along to discuss about how to 
present a health seminar and also other seminar, especially mental health as well. And I uh, want me to give some sort of inspired speech to her students. We're going to organize health, a seminar. All day seminar include their parents as well in the near future. Probably I would like to invite the mayor of our city as well to talk about mental health. For me, I talk about other issues regarding to health. Yeah. And also about the liver, how to take care of the liver. And very soon we're going to come up with that sort of seminar. And on that night, I had a chance to attend a Springwell Shopping Center, uh, what we call the Christmas uh, celebration. Normally they invited our mayor and counselor, the sort of thing. I had a bit of a chance to speak about what we have done for our central ward. And on a Friday the 16th, I attended a Christmas party organized by Springwell Italian Senior Citizen Club. They always expect me to give a speech about update about how what else I have done for Springwell Central and also always quick health seminar about well and health being for elderly. And on the Sunday, actually the 18th of December, National Day of Bhutan and Gala dinner celebration at Broad Meadow City. They invited me to assume as well, and plus the Bhutan and uh, what we call the Himalayan Association invited me uh, to attend that celebration. It's a great celebration, a lot to learn as well, and that's a great one. It acknowledged me as a, a counselor, represent City of Glenelg, traveled all the way one and a half hour from our city to join City of Hume, and thank you for the mayor of City of Hume as well. They so thank you for me to be there. And also on the Tuesday, the 20th of December, 11 o'clock in the morning, I had to attend Christmas party organized by Greek Orthodox Church at Springwell until 12, until 1. They already wanted me to always, as usual, update about whatever I have done for Springwell Central, plus a bit of health seminar, as usual. At 1 o'clock, I had to attend Victorian Chinese senior citizen at neighborhood house, especially those citizens very old, especially 70 year plus. They really, the same story again, I get a bit of speech, a bit of health seminar, and they want me to support them for a long term, especially health seminar. On uh, Thursday, the 22nd, attend sunrise in Springwell between 7 to 9 o'clock. That's a great one every year. Good for me to get to know so many council staff and manager that I learn a lot from them as well, and I still have an idea to how to contact them as well. They are very supportive from our council. And on Friday, the 23rd December, I have a staff Christmas party at Heritage Hill, but unfortunately, I was very busy, so many other commitments. I had a bit of chance to talk to Mayor Eden uh, Foster and also Deputy Mayor only, just to want to organize about what we call Christmas speech to all our residents in the Edelon Council by Be Life. And also on a Sunday, the 25th, the Christmas day, I spent all morning with Monash Health, Monash Children hospital with Channel 9 and also one of the Monash Health to spend all gift to all the gift to the sick kid from ward to ward and also you know, um, and also to, to just encourage them and give them a confidence all of those young kids to be uh, to be happy and uh, and after that I have I had we had a chance for the fight to get to, to, to take over from me and therefore I had another chance to attend what we call the Christmas party for the unfortunate people on the Christmas day that I attended on behalf of our council as well. And I also organized the, what we call the, the mandolin, mandolin music group to come to entertain all those people, over 100, 200 people. In that time, we feel sorry for a lot of elderly people that are very lonely in some family too. Therefore, they really appreciate because they Receive a lot of Christmas gifts. It's a very unbelievable Christmas gift and foods as well. I serve food to all, uh, to most of them and serve their, so their drink and so on and so on. This charity organized by what we call, uh, organized by reaching out because we can and serving of the two hearts. And on Tuesday, 27 of December, I, I, I had a meeting with, I, I approached by other media, Go Media and also Springwell, or uh, SK Media as well, to help me to promote Luna Nuvi and Springwell because we had so many questions from our resident, our business owner, and especially the visitors say that when going to be going to happen our Luna New Year. That's what I put a lot of work and effort, and also I took a lot of brochure from Sabah to promote for that a few weeks prior to that. 
On the, two, on the Monday, the 2nd of January, I had a chance to attend charity dinner organized by Save Cambodian Children Fund that I, one of the active members that support them and also a major sponsor for the last 20 years that built school in remote area of Cambodia for our 20 years. And on the Tuesday, the 3rd of January, and we were invited by Pharmaceutical Society Australia, part of Australian Journal of Pharmacy podcast interview, I yes, said I get the chance that to inform my pharmacists around Australia about my profession, what I think about my profession, what else we can do better. On the Sunday, or oh, on the Wednesday, the 4th of January also, I had a meeting with a company named Allen Go, Property Limited. The idea I meet for them because I want to provide some more job for our municipality. They provide three type of job. This company, very big company, there's three sub Subcommittee, uh, three, three company, company actually, we provide manufacturing, agriculture, and nursery job for our city and pro especially Cambodian community as well. Therefore, I've got a long talk on that day, probably two or three hours, just to understand what they're going to provide to our city. And on Sunday, the 8th of January, I attended the TQ Chinese Association with Mayor. Yeah. Also, that's a great one as well. On the Sunday, the 15th of January, I attend Spring Wild Luna New Year celebration. And also on Tuesday, the 17th of January, I attend Multicultural Red Shield Appeal Meeting Salvation Army. That I'm one, I'm the part of formation of the, what they call Multicultural Red Shield Appeal last June. Now I said part of it. Now I have another second meeting. The third one going to have a big one at Box Hill Town Hall. Friday, the 20th of January, I had a meeting with Go Island again that regarding to the job prospect as well, especially unemployment for our city. And uh, the last one, I sort of, I attend, uh, actually, yeah, I attend, um, on Sunday, yeah, I attend the Tamil festival, festival of Thanksgiving to the nature, and very good turn up, especially politicians, plenty of politicians on that day, too many speeches, yeah, thank you for that. And also, uh, I would like to thank to our council, especially councillor, that gave me a chance to renovate multi level car park number eight. That's a great one, a great outcome, a lot of good email, a lot of uh, comment on social media, and people love that new yeah, multi level car park. Now, after White Elephant for over 10 years, we lost a lot of money. And, um, and also, thank you for our new CEO, yeah, Mrs. Uh, <coughs> Weather, uh, weather, weather, weather real, that Kabal come and I had a good chance to discuss with her last Monday, a great discussion, more than an hour, and very good feedback, and she sort of very interactive with me, and she really support me about some point. That, yeah, that's a great one as well. My question is, very quick question, is only not much to really want. The question is just a follow-up question more, actually. I've been request this one for many years, especially prior to my uh, election. I want to put a lot of sign in every corner of the street of Spring Wells, this has never happened until now, and I read very frequently at the council meeting. I don't know why, because very frequently, I'm in Spring Wells every day, people asking me, where the toilet, where the multi-level car park, because I can mention, oh, multi-level car park, they have no idea that, like, well, uh, multi-level car park behind that apartment at all, and toilet have no idea where the toilet. And also there are three toilets that are not our job, but at least three of them belong to management and also belong to body corporate. They are already willing to cooperate with me and to finish their renovation already. Secondly, the toilet please give a signage, therefore they are very desperate they will come to ask my pharmacy for the toilet. The second question is only about the light the light, street light at Springwell. It's always said, oh, enough, the EPA, uh, uh, what we call, uh, what, we, what we call the, the light is always up to standard, blah, blah, blah. Kevin Van Box there, I show him, you look at the street, look at the light still yellow, and a lot many lights is not working. And he said, okay, okay, but still, up to now, if he can come to see me one day, as council officer, I can take them around just to have a look why I raised this question, because the Business owner always complain about the light is not uh, good enough. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lim. Uh, Mr. Chinkagana, can you please respond to both questions? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first question regarding signage uh, around Springvale, particularly to the toilets. 
Uh, we've got a plan has been developed, and we're currently seeking quotes from various contractors to put that in place. So that shouldn't be too far off. And the um, the second question regarding the street lighting, we're, ha we're happy to meet with uh, Councillor Lim and have a tour of uh, which uh, street lights may or may, not, may be out, and then we can get them reported and repaired. Thank you, Mr. Chinkagana. Thank you, Thank you, Mayor. Actually, we had a tour in June, July, I think, for one night tour, about 6 to 9 o'clock. A lot of community leaders and also the police in charge of Springwell said the same thing. Community leader and council officer too, they support to write a report to our council about how poorly the signage and the lighting and so on and so on. But so far, we haven't got any answer from that as well. And the next question, the final question, thanks for for all the answer. And the final question is just Springwell, oh, Springwell uh, uh, Neighborhood Health. They really put pressure on me very frequently, you know, from especially Italian senior citizen club. They said, when are we going to fridge the kitchen? Yeah, would you give me the answer? Because I have no idea how to answer them anymore. I said, oh, well, they're going to do it. They, all say, they always say that we, as a council, we always ignore about the kitchen at the spring, uh, neighborhood house. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lim. Mr Chinkagana, please. Oh, thank you, Mayor. We, we do have an, an annual ongoing program for kitchen refurbishments and we tend to be working on the, the worst ones first, but I can find out where that particular kitchen is on that list and let uh, Councillor Lynn know. Thank you, Mr Trinkagana. Thank you, Mayor. That's all for me. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Councillor Lim. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, may I start with my questions first? Um, my first question this evening to the relevant director. Um, there's been a lot of media coverage, particularly due to soft plastics uh, and the collapse of Red Cycle Group. Uh, within the media coverage, there's a lot of conversation about warehouses in the north and the west. Um, I did note that there were several articles that did mention Dandenong South. So I assume we do have a warehouse where we do have a stockpile of soft plastics or a stockpile of um, product or material at the moment. I just want to find out what this council is currently doing in terms of dealing with it. One, given it's an environmental risk, uh, and two, given it's also uh, an emergency potential fire risk as well. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Mr Trinkagana. Oh, sorry, Mr Bosman. Thank you, Madam Mayor, to yourself and um, with Mr Chinkwangrana has anything to add, um, that I could hand over to him. But um, Councillor Dark, we actually have a working group um, together with DELP officers. They've now changed from DELP to another department name, but with DELP funded and DELP appointed officers, and we're part of an intelligence sharing network with other councils, because what will often happen is that an operator in one area, when the pressure is put on them, will then move to another municipality, and so they move around. So there's a coordinated and collaborative um, working group, task force, that works between councils and with state government. We have um, staff from the um, state government that have been funded by them and sit in with our planning compliance officers. Um, so that's what we're doing. We know we work together with Vic Police, with the state government, with the other councils. There are a number of agencies involved that take um, an across agency or inter agency approach into trying to find out where these um, premises are and once we find them, to take the appropriate action in terms of fire risks and other hazards that might be present. So it's very much an active. Um, group and very much a, uh, a, a successful one in terms of interagency and intercouncil um, collaboration. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bosman. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the Director for the comprehensive response. Uh, my next question uh, has to do with the footpath quality in Keysborough Ward. Um, I was out on the weekend uh, talking about the upgrades to Parkland Court, and I, I, if I'd snap and solved, I would have had to have taken probably a couple of hundred photos. Uh, of the street. Do, do we do a, a footpath scan or a footpath audit or, and how often do we check the quality of footpaths we have in the municipality and when they're due for a bit of renewal? Thank you, Councillor Dark. Mr Chinkagana. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we do do regular surveys of what, the health, our whole footpath network, um, assess the condition. We use that to inform when we're doing our repairs and also to give us a broader indication of the whole network. The, net, the network is reasonably good, so it is often those um, individual spots that are a problem, and we're happy to look um, at a whole street if that's required, but certainly SnapScene Solve is the best 
way to address, to alert us to individual um, individual issues. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll send through an email up tomorrow with the, the streets that I walked and where are their issues. Um, the next question I have is from uh, Mr. Kayo from Keysbar, and I raised this in the past to do with the Allen Corrigan Reserve, um, with a group of persistent uh, volleyballers that are continuously making a lot of noise, a lot of yelling, a lot of loud music. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Thorley within the department has been looking into it. Um, the resident has been consistently asking. Uh, and messaging me photos and videos. Um, he's asked what time the local laws officers are around to and approximately uh, sort of how much time. He called the council's customer service centre, got put on hold and has been trying to get through to the relevant officer to try and get some sort of action on it. Um, I'm aware that we believe they potentially were another, the same group that's from another reserve as well. Um, but if we could please just have an update of where that's at because I'm aware that he was watching tonight. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Mr Bosman, please. Madam Mayor, thank you. Through yourself, Councillor Dark, I'm well aware of this particular situation. We have, in fact, been in touch with the complainant. Um, we have um, tried to arrange that our local laws officers are also in attendance at later hours. Um, we're working together with uh, Mr Chinkundrana's um, Parks Department as well in terms of looking at design and other issues that might, in fact, be design um, issues that resolve the situation. It is an active, um, a case that's under active management at the moment. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a quick resolution to the matter, but it's certainly one that involves a number of officers and we are in touch with the complainant councillor. Thank you, Mr Bosman. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my next question actually is a bit of a, a supplementary question to the question that was asked by the resident um, early this evening from Noble Park. I believe she's still in the gallery. Um, the one asked questions regarding 5G and then also council CCTV network. Um, I'm aware we do have a very large CCTV network in this municipality. Um, and I suppose from a, a privacy point of view, given the recording, the tranche of information that is recorded, um, whether we do have a policy of what we keep what is recorded, given people's private lives are basically being recorded. If you go high enough, you can get a pretty good vantage view. Uh, you see a lot with drone photography these days. You can get a, a lot of pri a privacy. Uh, you can't get a lot of privacy, I should add. Uh, so I just want to find out what Council's policy is around the, the retention of CCTV data and what we do with it. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Mr Bosman, please. Madam Mayor, through yourself. Councillor, we do have a policy. Um, our policy and our use of CCTV, um, safer streets, the, um, the public CCTV is strictly governed by legislation. Our policy is strictly in accordance with that legislation and how we use that data and who has access to that data follows the protocols and the, the requirements of that legislation. I'm happy to um, share that policy with you. That's, that's no great secret. Um, but the, all of our data and how we collect it, how we store it, et cetera, is all governed by legislation. And um, the, uh, the access to it, again, has to go through particular um, requirements that meet the, the protocols of that legislation. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Bosman. Councillor Dar. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Just a supplementary on that. Does, does this organisation have drones and do we record any drone footage from that across any of the directorates? Thank you. Mr Bosman, please. Madam Mayor, the simple answer, Councillor, is no, we don't. We don't, have, um, we don't use drones, um, although I think that it's probably um, something that we should be looking at. The use of drones is not cheap. Um, the use of drones um, in some circumstances actually requires the approval of the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, but the short answer to the question is no, we don't have drones and we don't gather information, um, you know, obviously then in that case from drones. Thank you, Mr Bosman. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it, it's been a very busy, I suppose, Christmas New Year period. I know most of the councillors have been out and about a lot of events, um, probably not many more than yourself and Richard, uh, Councillor Lim, sorry, uh, that are attending a lot of events in the municipality. Um, a few that I had the opportunity to attend, the Lunar New Year Festival at Saba um, is always a fantastically well attended event. Um, we were able, it was such a popular event, we drew uh, councils from the city of Kingston, we drew members of parliament from the north and the west. Um, there was quite a very large attendance to uh, the event and it's always good to come back at night time for the, the fireworks to see a younger crowd, a lot of locals coming out to celebrate and see what is going on. 
Um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, on the weekend just gone. Um, the Noel Park Tennis Club, they've got a new coach starting for the new season. They're undergoing a lot of refurbishment works to make sure that they're up and running for the new season ahead. Um, they're uh, one of the anchor tenants affiliated with the Parkfield Master Plan, and it's good to see what they're getting into place. Um, I have been asked to give a shout out that they are launching um, a pickleball group within the Noble Park Tennis Club. I don't know what pickleball is, but I've given them a shout out. Uh, so if you're interested in pickleball, by all means, contact the Noble Park Tennis Club. <coughs> Um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, a couple of events with the Springvale Scouts, always very well attended, a lot of local kids um, as they're growing and growing as well, uh, bringing a lot of the new Scouts through the ranks. Um, I attended the, or I was actually at the opening, finally, the Walk to Reserve uh, Wetlands and Boardwalk. Uh, it, I did, it was finished after I turned 30, but it is what it is. Um, but actually, it looks fantastic. The stainless steel rails, the, the area where you can look to view uh, and the vantage. And every single night that I've been down there, um, I was only down there the other night with the Keysborough Cricket Club, I was Keysborough Tennis Club, uh, and then the Puckfield Pirates as well. Puckmore Pirates, get my clubs right. Um, and, and as well, there were so many people walking around having a look, feeding birds uh, and the ducks, and to see the, the uh, environment now quickly regrow and people using it to celebrate something very exciting. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the Ukrainian Association of Park um, with yourself, Theophany Eve, um, another big celebration in their uh, Orthodox calendar, being the blessing of the water, and having a lot of the arrival, a lot of the new uh, migrants into the local area as well. Um, it was interesting to see that since the, the start of uh, the conflict there, that they have taken 3,000 uh, Ukrainian uh, asylum seekers and refugees into uh, Melbourne, and they've then placed those throughout the southeast and through the west. Um, they're actually connected with uh, Chisholm, Tafe and Dandenong and provided English classes and the basic numeracy and literacy uh, to be able to function and, and, and operate as a member of the society. Uh, and it was really good to see the younger generations coming out as well. A lot of younger ones in their late teens, their 20s, uh, some younger ones as well coming in, getting enrolled in school uh, as they start to work towards uh, becoming, a, I suppose, an Australian citizen in the near future. Um, it was a very, very well attended event. Uh, Lee Talamis uh, was there to announce, I believe it was $200,000 for some bathroom upgrades and some other facility upgrades as well. Um, they've upgraded the recent PA system. It, it, it's starting to really take shape as to what's there. Um, and one more final thing that would be remiss of me to say, uh, one of my good friends, um, Joe Gianfrido was actually just elected as a councillor in the city of Stonington. Uh, he ran in uh, a couple of times now, and he ran in 2020 when I sought re-election. Um, and he was fortunate enough to be re-elected in one of the countbacks that are occurring. The other countbacks are occurring on the 30th of January as well. Uh, so I just want to congratulate him uh, on his uh, election as a councillor for the next 18 months as we uh, guide through challenging waters across the whole region, particularly the local government sector at the moment with tenders, with budgets and everything as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Councillor Milkovic, please. Thank you, Mayor. I've just got a couple of questions for relevant officers tonight. I wish I could share some good news about the finishing of the works, like Councillor Dark had it to uh, walk the reserve. I'd like to get a, an update, please, if I could, on the completion and installation of the much beloved jetty at Tehachim Park, one of the lakes. The residents have been asking and waiting for quite a long time. Is there any movement in regards to construction of that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr Chinkogana, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I'll have to follow that up and get the latest update. I know they were planning to do some works and shortly, but I'll find out the exact nature of that. Thank you. Councillor Milkovic, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chinkogana. Thank you, Mayor. Um, could I also get an update on additional street lighting that was supposed to be installed after the Lux test was done? I think middle of last year at Carlton Road shops. I think there was some issue with where the poles can be located or pole can be located. But I actually went around there the other day and, and after dark, it actually is really, really dark. And, and because there's a pizza shop there, there's also, I think, an Indian restaurant or something. People are sort of a little bit worried, you know, to venture there late at night. Is there any update on, on possible installation from United Energy or from Council? Thank you. Mr Chinkogana, please. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'm happy to follow that up and, um, and let Council know how that's going. Thank you. Councillor Milkovic. Uh, thank you again. Um, also, probably again, Mr Chinkagana, an update on stage two completion of the works at basketball courts at Hatcham Park. When will they be, well, when will they commence? And is there any estimate on the finishing date? That's the surrounding area with the benches, I think water fountains and a couple of facilities for the families. The basketball court is finished, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Chinkagana, please. 
I just think may similarly I'll follow that up and get an, uh, the latest update on that as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chikarana. Um One issue that a huge number of residents have actually called me, and I did tell them that it is not our responsibility, unfortunately, that we would have sorted it out because this council does jump on these issues straight away, is, is, a, is a massive pothole that keeps reappearing on the corner of Start and Brady Road, which was due to the initial southeast water, water main lake. And I know we're not responsible for that part of the road. I think the Department of Transport is it's right on the intersection as you turn off. But could we please somehow beg and plead the Department of Transport to fix it properly? Because at best of times, they just patch it up with a soft bitumen, not even an asphalt. And before you know, it's, it's like a proving ground. It, it, it is absolutely atrocious. And, and it is quite dangerous because as you take a turn from Stud Road, obviously, you slow it down, but it is not actually visible until you hit it, and then it's almost too late in the cars. And, and there's been a couple of near misses there, so if we can please get in touch with the Department of Transport or whoever's in charge to just try and ask them to fix it a little bit better or provide some sort of a stable solution because it, it is just not working at the moment. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, Mr Chinkogana, please. Oh, yes, Mayor, we're happy to talk to our colleagues at the Department of Transport and find out what they can do with that site. Thank you. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and could I get an update or a question really is regarding the police paddock consulta consultation with the Aboriginal Land Council, Council, is that consultation happening at the moment? And if it is, when does it actually finish? Uh, Mr Foster, Forster, please. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, we'll need to take that uh, on notice and provide an update after the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Forster. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Foster. I'm looking forward to, to your response to this. And, and finally, a couple of issues on two different locations that, again, when I've caught up with a few people around the ending for coffees and, and, and whatnot over Christmas, is uh, unregistered vehicles parked consistently on Box Street in Dandenong between Plunkett Road and probably Circus Court on both sides of the road. I think there's a number of wreckers there. And also on Bennett Street. It is a real, real nuisance. And I did notice that there is a few more vehicles with the yellow stickers, which I believe are the council stickers to remove the vehicles, but it, it is a, a constant issue. Is, is anything being done and what can be done to just improve the availability of the parking for residents that need to visit local businesses or sporting facilities and just not have these wrecks sitting alongside of the road? That'll be great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr Bosman, please. Madam Mayor, thank you for yourself. Councillor Milkovic, it is, as you said, a constant problem. And as we clean up one street, and we move on um, and we're attending to the next street. The street that we just cleaned up goes back to its bad behaviour again and it's drawing up a lot of resources. In some cases, we actually have to rely on the assistance of VicPol because the offenders, the um, businesses that in some cases are guilty of um, creating the situation aren't always that easy to, to deal with. Um, we're certainly looking at taking different actions. You have seen the stickers um, yourself. Um, the, in my view, the sticker is more of a courtesy than a legal requirement, and if we can get a big enough fleet of tow trucks, just simply go in there and move them all off into a, um, into a compound, um, confiscate them. But it is a problem, it is one that we are um, trying to work with, trying to resource um, and find solutions to. I don't think we'll ever find a um, a complete solution to it, a solution that um, we'll be holding, but certainly if we can um, you know, at least get some improvement to the area, to the amenity, the aesthetics of the area, that would be a win. We are working on it and it is, it is as you say, um, a persistent problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr Bosman. Councillor Milkovic. Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. Well, I just want to say thank you to your team. I know you're doing a great job and I know it is a massive problem because these cars are sort of mobile and they move around, but do keep Adam, please, Mr. Bosman, in your department, because you know we don't need cities of Greater Denver looking like a wrecking yard. <laughs> That's the last thing we want. So thank you again. Thank you. Madam thank Mayor. you, Councillor Milkovich. Deputy Mayor, Councillor Formoso, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, welcome back, everybody. It's uh, good to be back. Um, welcome to, to Jackie, our new CEO. Such a pleasure to have you on board, and we all look forward to working with you and doing some amazing things in our city. So thank you. Um, obviously had a lot of uh, events before Christmas and in the new year, so I won't bore everybody with, with the details. I'll go straight into my questions. Um, the first one being uh, the pedestrian refuge on Baker's Road in front of Heritage Kindergarten. Um, this has been a thorn in my side for a very long time now. 
It uh, is causing a lot of near misses. And I understand that the process involved and what the engineers were saying was that you needed the driver behaviour to change for people to, to realise what they need to do in this situation. However, this has not been improving and in actual fact there's been some really, really close calls, a bit too close. Um, I did speak to one of our engineers before Christmas and flagged it. He agreed that the reasonable solution would be to perhaps put some signage just before the crossing a simple sign that says, you know, give way to, to pedestrians ahead or something like that. And my understanding was that that was going to be ordered. Um, however, I've received emails from the committee saying, the Heritage um, Kindergarten Committee saying that the matter is now resolved and that um, they won't be doing any further work. So there's a little bit of um, a miscommunication between uh, all of us. So I'd like that to be clarified and if we could uh, get a response from the appropriate officer about this matter, please, Mayor. Thank you. Mr Chinkogana, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, from what I understand, talking to the traffic engineers, they, they haven't come up with a, 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 a fixed solution yet. They are monitoring it, they're observing it, they're watching drive behaviour, particularly as it changes, um, but they don't I think the, the, I think the, um, the the local residents wanted a zebra crossing, which is not possible within our with our, our powers. Um, but they are continuing to monitor, and we're looking at all sorts of alternatives, which may include signs, may include line marking. Um, but we'll um, they'll continue that investigation. Thank you, Mr. Chinkagana, Deputy Mayor Formoso. Thank you, Mr. Chinkagana. In actual fact, I'd probably insist on having a meeting with our. Um, engineers, the committee and myself as soon as possible, please, because I kind of just feel like we're, we're running around in circles and not really resolving this issue at all. So if I could request that we have that meeting as soon as possible, please. Thank you, Mr Chenkadana. Uh, yes, Mayor, yes, happy to meet. I understand that was, this would be a follow-up to the November meeting, um, which we've got some notes from. So yeah, we're happy to, um, to have another meeting. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Formoso. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, another issue that I'm, I'm really insisting on is uh, councillor contacts in the um, monthly magazine. Um, if we could have the ward map placed in every single issue, I'm, I'm pretty confident that every resident would appreciate having it as well. Um, I realise that it might take up a little bit more space in the magazine, but I think it's pretty crucial for, for what we do and who we are and what it is that we're trying to achieve. Residents do want to contact us. They want to know who their ward councillors are, and I think a map is really, really um, imperative. So I'd really ask for, for that to be an ongoing matter um, uh, in our magazine. Please, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Formoso. Ms Sprague? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, councillors, that would require a full page of the magazine each month, um, which I'm happy to do based on the direction of councillors. But in order to be large enough to be legible, um, I think it would require a full page. The map is available on our website for people to access at any time. Um, but again, happy to take the direction of councillors if you would like that in every edition. We can certainly do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Frog. Deputy Mayor Formoso. Uh, that'd be great. I'm pretty sure what I'm referring to is basically um, residents that aren't online. So it's really, really crucial that we have this because that's their only form of um, information and contact with us. So um, I think that would be great. And if uh, councillors agree, I think that would be one that we should have um, monthly in there. Thank you very much. That's all from me. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Formoso. Um, in terms of my own report, I won't go through every single one because it is a, a month's worth of um, events that I've attended, but um, I'll just mention a few here tonight. Uh, so I've attended the Noble Park Community Centre Christmas Luncheon um, that was in partnership with Servants of the Two Hearts and Reaching Out Because We Can. Those two um, charities do great work. They're, they're quiet achievers, but they do a lot in, in our community and also beyond as well. Um, another event that I thoroughly enjoyed, and, and I enjoy all the events that I attend, but I just want to mention a few that are quite notable. Um, I attended a, um, a performance called Ask Me My Name. It was a performance by local young adults that are involved in the Next Step program as part of Burke and Beyond. Um, it was fantastic to see young people that perhaps have um, particular disabilities or difficulties really shine and demonstrate their confidence as part that's grown as part of this program. So um, if they do perform again at the, at the um, 
Walker Street Gallery or anywhere else in Greater Dandenong, I do encourage residents and my fellow councillors to attend um, such performances. Um, I've also attended the Springvale Shopping Centre Owners Committee end of year event, which was um, a fantastic opportunity to see the, um, I guess, the, the hear from the um, vendors and what they do and how, um, how that uh, shopping centre is going. Um, and I attended that with a couple of my fellow councillors. Um, another notable one was the grand opening of the new facilities at Willow Lodge. Um, I think I want to move in there. It is amazing. The, the new facilities and, and new indoor pool, um, it, there is a new study area, new dining area. It was, it was amazing. So it was uh, lovely to see uh, the residents there and, and um, actually seeing the faces on, on the residents who've been there a long time to see how amazed they are by the, the changes. Uh, I also attended um, the Cornerstone annual Christmas lunch um, and it was a good opportunity to, to serve um, some of the vulnerable uh, residents in the area. Um, and they, they do look forward to the annual lunch, but Cornerstone serve um, food regularly to our vulnerable residents. So I'd, uh, another big shout out to um, one of the charities in our municipality. And uh, there are a couple of newer community events that I attended, in particular the um, cultural day that I attended with uh, Councillor Garrard. It was a lovely, vibrant um, event, lots of dancing. I think both of us got on the floor. Um, it was a very lovely event um, and the hospitality there was um, amazing. Um, also, well, a big one to mention is the, the New Year's Eve celebration in Dandenong Park. I th I think that is one of the events that we do quite well, and I attended that with, again, um, Councillor Long and Councillor Garrard. Um, it, is, it is amazing to see the faces on the children and even the adults, but the children um, in particular, when they see the 9.30 fireworks go off, um, they are in awe and they are so excited to be there, and it's just a very rewarding and, um, you know, I guess this role when you see the excitement on their faces, it makes this role um, even more important and to be part of that is brilliant. And I, again, another New Year event, but this time the Springvale Lunar New Year event um, on Buckingham Avenue was amazing as part of the Springvale Asian Business Association and Greater Dandenong um, in partnership with that. Um, it was vibrant, it was bustling, um, and it was great to, to see uh, the community and people further out as well. I had some friends come down from um, the western suburbs to come and visit as, as well and um, enjoy what Springvale has to offer. And as uh, Councillor Dark mentioned, the Ukrainian Theophany Eve um, celebration as well. It's fantastic to see our community welcoming uh, quite a number of Ukrainian um, asylum seekers and refugees um, into our community. And just yesterday, I attended the Tamil Pongal Festival with a couple of uh, my fellow councillors. Again, our, our community is such a diverse and vibrant community that it is nearly every weekend that there is a um, multicultural celebration. And so I think we are very blessed in our municipality to be celebrating these with our, our residents. And I would like to wish all of our residents who are either celebrating um, Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, um, Pongal, festival, um, you name it, I wish them all a, um, a, a happy and prosperous year ahead. Um, Ms Weatherall, are there any uh, council questions to table from our pre previous meeting? Uh, just one more moment. Yeah. Still learning the format here, apologies. Um, we have a few, um, one from Councillor Tan to do with the Black Spot Program, Bloomfield Road, Noble Park North. Um, we took that question on notice on the 12th, 12th of December 2022 and she was concerned about major road safety projects in the Noble Park Ward and the Black Spot 
program funded by the federal government. Um, we had a further response provided on the 14th of December where we said the design work for federal black spot program funded Bloomfield Road is now at final stage and should be complete by mid-January and the tendering process will follow with appointment of a construction contract. And we aim to complete these works within current financial years. That's been completed. The next one was from Councillor Tan as well about completion date of works on Joy Parade and Henry Street in Noble Park. And the further response was provided on the 14th of December with the proposed um, LATM works for Joy Parade are currently in the design stage, should be completed by mid-January, following the works to be put out to tender. Until a contractor is appointed, difficult to define a completion date. However, it will be done within the financial year, so that item's now completed as well. And we can table the rest. Sorry? Um, I'm sure we can table the rest. Yes, that's yep. fine. Sorry. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms Witherall. Is there any urgent business? As there's no urgent business, I declare um, the meeting is now closed and thank you everyone. And I'd like to thank um, those in the gallery as well for, for being here tonight. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>